The beginning of the Bechechenese national movement can be seen as a direct result of the Christian Holocaust in the Ottoman Empire during World War I. From 1915 to 1918, between two and three million Christians became the victims of genocide at the hands of the Muslim Turkish government. Immediately following World War I, with the Ottomans' defeat, the Christians of the empire cried out for a safe refuge from persecution. As the events of the genocide came to light in the Western world, the people of Europe and America were outraged. They demanded that the Allied governments meet the request of the Eastern population. The Allies were only too willing to dispense with the last remaining of the Central Powers. As they drafted a treaty to conclude the war with the Ottoman Empire, the Allies required the cession of massive amounts of land. The Ottomans had little choice but to comply, as the government's power was rapidly deteriorating following their defeat. The empire was formally dissolved and succeeded by the Turkish Republic only a few years later. Most of the southern empire, however, was given into the hands of the Eastern Christians, who formed a coalition government to create their desired refuge state. There was some difficulty in combining the several Christian peoples of the East into a single nation, but a constitutional convention was held to ensure that the voice of all citizens was heard. As one delegate very elegantly put it, Our country is at the crossroads of destiny. The slightest neglect will result in irreparable loss for our motherland. The people banded together with a common faith to give rise to a new nation, which they named Bichechina, the land of God's presence. The constitution laid the groundwork for a democratic republic, but was unique in setting up a consulate government, a state in which the executive power is consolidated in two individuals, called consuls. The government was initially based in the traditional Christian city of Antioch. The democratic republic of Bichechina had formally been born. In the decades that followed, the nation began to slowly develop and to subjugate its territory. When World War II broke out, Bichechina initially sought to maintain neutrality. However, most of her neighbors, seeing their chance to destroy their Christian counterpart, entered the war with the Axis powers. Bichechina was soon forced into the war with the Allies as it strived for its very survival, determined to prevent the events of World War I from ever occurring again. The Bechechenese quickly organized into an efficient and effective military force. When the war ended, through both conquest and diplomacy, Bichechina had further extended its territory and grown to its present size. Much governmental reform was then needed in order for the nation to adjust to its new territory and population. The most notable occurrence of this time was the movement of the country's capital from Antioch to two new locations, Ephesus in the west and Ormia in the east. The two cities would serve as the major seats of government for the Western and Eastern Consuls, respectively. Bichechina has since continued to grow. It is now a hub between the East and the West, a center for trade, art, and culture. This is essentially the state in which we find Bichechina today. But why is it that so few people know about Bichechina? It is a fairly large country, and it is undeniably influential in world affairs.